So what is the algorithm of life? Well, let's do an experiment. What makes a great mind? Just think about it yourself. What if you were the greatest mind to ever walk the earth? What would you do? What would you invent? What would be different than it is now? Now, continue to think about it as we go along, but I will give you an uh, example so you can think about it easily. Now, this is a scientist, so it is possible you don't know him. It's fine. Albert Einstein was one of the greatest minds to ever walk the earth, probably. And he invented a lot of stuff. For example, the photoelectric effect formula for which he won his Nobel Prize in 1921. Or maybe you know him for the binding energy equation, which you have to have seen at at least one physics classroom. It goes E equals MC squared. And maybe my favorite personally is the theory of relativity. This is the one where time and space are on a plane, straightness is subjective, and gravity is in the police station for interrogation. So, what do all those things have in common? Well, we are not going to talk about them specifically, but rather how he came up with them. And a 16-year-old boy, Einstein, thought to himself, what if I could chase the light? What if I could outrun a light beam? What would happen then? And not only did he ask himself this, but a lot of other crazy questions like that. And he continued to ask them throughout his life. And not only him, but a lot of scientists continued to ask those questions on a daily basis. So is this it? Is this all we have to do to become a great mind? Just continue to ask crazy questions throughout the day for the rest of our life? Turns out, almost. Well, to understand better how great minds work, we're going to dissect the mind itself into its building blocks. And why are we doing that? Well, I'll give you an example. You all have seen a computing device at least once in your life. Would it be your phone, laptop, or even computer, whatever. And it usually works, it does the job, and it is easy to operate. But sometimes there might be a problem. For example, the screen isn't working well, it's glitching. And only if you knew that the video card is the thing that needed to be cleaned for the screen to stop glitching, or maybe the little box in the bottom of your screen saying, update me, update me, and you didn't. Well, now you know why. You should do it. So, how are we going to do that? Oh, I'm a big fan of computer science, and I personally believe it is one of the greatest things we have invented ever since technology. So, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence in itself contains machine learning, and within machine learning, there is deep learning, which is based on neural networks. Now, this may sound familiar because your brain in itself is a network of neurons. So, it has the same principle, and we're going to see its exact structure. Now, this is what it looks like. It's not that scary. We have the input layer and the output layer, which are usually fixed. However, there may be a hidden layer or some hidden layers that we don't really know what they do. And we will assign random values to each point and each line in this diagram, and we will call this a system, a system of values. Now, all those system of values will have different output. For example, we will give it something, and when it gives us out something else, it would be random. It will probably be wrong at the first time, but we will say bad computer, bad computer. And we will continue to do that until it learns to do better by changing those values for the better. And this is called reinforcement learning, something like you would do to your dog, for example. When he sits, or gives you his paw, you give him a treat. So computers do the similar thing. That's why Terminator is not going to be real. Sorry, guys. And <laughs> yeah, so this is the error rate in itself. I know it looks crazy, but believe me, it is not. When those are the, this is all the systems that we have put on a plane, and those are the error rates. For example, higher means it is less correct. So with a little bit of calculus and linear algebra, we can go down to the local minimum, for example, at that point there. And I know this is a little bit of theory, so I will just give you some examples. The Google ne Neural Machine Translation, or as you know it, Google Translate. I think some of you have used this at least 
uh, a couple of times, and maybe some of you are familiar from uh, with it be from before, like from a couple years before. And it was very, very, very incorrect at the time. Now, I know it's not perfect even now, but for a machine that never had a Spanish or a German teacher, I think it does a pretty incredible job, don't you? And another example for how computers do that is the MNIST database, which had a great sample size of handwritten digits from 0 to 9 and asked the computer, what is this digit? And the computer didn't know. It said 6 was a 1 at first, or maybe 3 was 9, whatever. But after a while, it turns out that it performed even better than humans themselves, which was also pretty amazing. And this logic doesn't only imply to computers, but to people as well. And I will give you a fictional example, one that you're probably very familiar with. Sherlock Holmes has his great um, methodology of solving all his detective cases. And the thing he used in all of the adaption, no matter what, was his mind palace. That's where he categorized each and every thought or information he had throughout the day so he can easily access it. And after that, there's also the specific logic he used. And to quote himself, it's, it goes, when you exclude the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. So not only did he have great memory, he had just great logic. And that's how he became a great detective, actually. And here is another example that we see in the human world. That would be science. Because even scientists, when you think about all those thought experiments they do, <coughs> that we mentioned in the start, those are also just to um, well, indulge your imagination and critical thinking skills into doing more and more and performing better every day. OK, we have the examples. We have the theory. What is the one thing in common? Well, here is the secret of algorithm of life. For a system to be learning, it needs a dynamic database that is continuously improving upon itself and some sort of enhancing mechanism that just makes sure you progress and not regress, which I think makes it obvious. Now, here is a little story from six million years ago when the first hominins were found. And we have evidence from 300,000 years ago of the first Homo sapiens. Now, what did they all have in common? Well, maybe it's the fact that they continue to survive and fight throughout history, and we are here now just because they did it. But how did they do it? Well, we're going to do another experiment. Turn to your partner sitting next to you, or someone next to you, and ask yourselves, what is the one thing you see in common? Is it the eye color? Maybe it's the fashion style, or because you're friends, you have similar interests. Well, what about if we do the room? What is the one thing common inside the whole room? Well, I think maybe because all of you want to learn something new today, or maybe you really had nothing better to do today. Whatever the reason, if we continue to broaden the scope this way, we are left with the city, the country, the continent, and even the world. What does the world have in common? What do all humans have? Well, the one thing we all share is our brain. Our brain is this very, very powerful tool that we ought to use continuously to continue to improve. And I think by using the algorithm of life, we can now work with it even better. So let me ask you again. What makes a great mind? What if you were the greatest mind to walk the earth? Here's a little secret. You don't have to imagine any of this, because the truth is, you are one of the greatest minds to walk the earth. So next time, just you tell me. Thank you very much. Thank you.